Yes, boys, it's Knox Hill with Team Goal Ramey, and today we got a special video all about defending. These are our top five defensive hacks that you need to improve your game and be a clean sheet defender. Now listen, I've spent my whole career as a striker, scoring goals and taking on defenders. So I'm not exactly the best source to do this. So I thought I'd bring in an expert, a man who's played in the Premiership, he's played in the Championship levels, and he is a top level defender, Alex Baptiste, to give it to you. Now. Hi guys, it's Alex Baptiste. I've got five top tips for you to help you keep clean sheets, so let's get into it. Hi guys, we're gonna talk about defending in the box. First thing you need to do before any game as a defender is make sure you know who you're up against and what their attributes you think they are and what your skills are compared to the, your opponent. So if you look at me, I'm not really six foot, I'm a quite a small defender. So say if I was if I was marking a big striker, I wouldn't get too tight to him because I know I'd be able to make up that initial half a step because I feel like I could be quicker than him, which is one of my attributes. Um, if I was defending someone like Knox, I would say that he was quicker than me. Um, He's not as tall as me, so I'd feel like I've got strength over him physically. Um, so, because he, he looks sharper than me, I would get as tight as I can, but without selling myself. So I'd always be touched tight somewhere where I can see the where I can see the ball and see him. As long as you can see the ball, you can go whichever way whichever way he goes, and try not to let him turn. Try not to face him up like this. So if Knox has got his back to me again. And some, and I don't want. I want him to stay there with his back to goal. I do not want him to say if he gets a turn on me. I do not want him there because if I get him, there, if he gets me there, then I'm screwed basically. He can shift it whichever way, and then especially in the box because all he needs is half a yard, and then he's striking at goal. So, like I said, if I can keep him that way as far as close as possible, and also as you can tell, the goal's there. So if Knox is there that that. I want to get him somehow to go this way because obviously it's away from goal. So I would even, like, like I said, I'd even give him a half yard so that he can't get that way so that I can go that way because obviously the goal is a danger and your keeper will be screaming at you to force him away from goal. Also, being a defender, it's also very, it's very important you're able to shift your body weight from here get as low as you can from here to go this way to go that way as you know strikers are very tricky and they've got great feet and which you need to learn very quickly is you need to be able to shift your body weight from here always feeling the striker with your forearms and and being as strong as you can but not being too over aggressive to be able to go from there to there to switch it up like that because the strikers are very tricky nowadays and if you're not able to switch your feet then you're screwed basically so if yeah so if i'm like that if he goes there and I can't get my feet round there, he's lost me. But if I'm like that, and then I'm able to shift over there like that, then you need to be able to shift your arm and be strong. Be strong and force him back and force him back. As a defence, you're not working on your own, you're with, you're with a unit. There's four of you, there might be three of you, there might be five of you, there's a keeper. The second defender, if the one's tight, tight on the back like this, the second defender has got to be in a 45 degree angle like this onto this side. If the strike is there, center off, your center off's there and you're playing as a fullback position and maybe your wing is there, like I said, you can't oversell yourself because, say if you oversell yourself to go mark the winger, you could reverse it back there. It's always better to let it go there Make sure you and make sure you can see ball and man because obviously, like I said, you can reverse it and then you're in trouble because he's, because he's lost you. So, as you can see ball and man, I can see him there. If I can't see the ball, if I'm like this, then I'm snookered because I don't know what he's going to do with the ball. But like I said, open yourself up, ball and man, 45 degree angle to the, to the first defender, either side. And especially if you're centre half, you're centre half your partner really. It's a massive, massive relationship between you two. So if I'm the second centre half, I'm telling him where I want him to go. Maybe I want him to go down the line. 
maybe I want him to go. Maybe I want him to go away from goal, really, because obviously I can defend the cross, and, we, and it's not nowhere near our goal. If he's coming in, if he somehow beats my first defender and comes in, second defender's got to get out as quick as he can, and he's got to shut that space down as quick as he can. That's imperative. So you've always got to look out for your buddy. If he beats your man, you've just got to leave your man and get across, and the left back's got to get in with you as well. Right, like I said before, team team defending is everything, and the relationships that you have between the people that you're playing with and your keeper is massive keeper can see everything he can see the whole whole picture and so can the second defender so if i'm the second defender and my first my primary defender is up against him like this i'm telling my second defender to show him as show him line so i'm screaming to him show him line show him line show him line so i can get back into my position here because my central defender will be as tight as he can showing him line like that to get a crossing i'm covering the goal so I feel like I'm in a better position. Like I said again before, open your body up. Never, sit, never let them see your number here. Open your body up so you can see the runners coming in. I feel more comfortable if I'm sending him the line and he's, and he's going to cross it, then if he's cutting inside here and he's got all sorts of options, he can shoot, he can roll, he can roll someone in. The left back's going to have to come in, so there might be a winger, there might be a winger three because it's technically three v three v two. If obviously he's beaten the man, so. Like I said, as a second defender, you need to be able to talk. As a keeper, you need to be able to talk and you need to be able to take on board what, you, what other people want you to do and see out the danger together and hopefully keep cleaning sheets together because that's what it's all about as defending. The touchline, Johnson. Looks crossing in, fights Baptiste, who fights the back of the net, six yards out, Daniel Johnson right on the head of... Guys, um, we're going to talk about defending corners. There's a lot of ways to do it, obviously. Some teams go for zonal, but I'm going to talk about man marking because you normally have about five main markers uh, from corners going on height and or positional base where who's going to pick up the best headers of the ball depending on their size and what, and what have you. And as a defender, I'm normally one of the markers, so I'm going to talk about what I do. It's obviously, it's dependent on your preference and that and what have you but this is what i feel that's worked well with my career i don't know any other way really of how i would defend corners so this is how i do it we're going to talk about my attributes i'm not the biggest but i know how to get my body in certain positions where if the striker is going to head the ball or the center half that you're up against is going to head the ball you don't always have to go and win the header this comes through experience sometimes a little body a little body shove right at the position of him going to head it just to get a glance on it and um, a lot of keepers that I played with because I'm not the biggest sometimes they, I hear them shout you know you've done enough which means I haven't won the header but I know that I've got my body shape in a position where he ain't gonna fully attack the ball and score like I said it's all about body position if you can get yourself in the right positions all the time then that will do then you don't have to be the biggest you can be a centre midfielder that's that's up against a six foot six monster from the back who knows that, you know, centre half who's been heading it. But if you get into the right positions, uh, he will win the header, but he will not score if you know how to use your body well then. So we're going to talk about that also. All right, so the corner's from this side. You want to get into position where you can see both. So in your peripheral vision, you've got both, both here. The main art of defending is never let the striker see your number. So if you're standing here, you can see my you can see my number on the back of my shirt. That's a bad position because say if he goes there, there's no way I can there's no way I can recover to get back to there. So like I said, so never let the striker see your number and always have your posi have your position like this. So like a 45 degree angle. So if he goes that way, say he goes that way, I'm, I'm there like that. Or if he goes forward, I can I can get my hand there like that. And it's all about body position, like I said. See. So what I like to do, as, as, as I said, I'm not a very tall defender. Um, I'm 5'11 slash 6 foot, but <laughs> a lot of people I come up against, centre offs, you know, set strikers, you know, they're all they're all normally taller than me. So what I normally just so what another thing that I like to do, before the even corners even taken, I like to get my arms up. I don't know why I've done this. And I like to go low as well. So I like to get my arms up here. So like I said, whichever way he goes, if say if he goes whichever way he goes, see, I'm always I'm always touch tight holding him. I don't know why. It's just 
that that as a defender so you've got to get your body shape it's a lot of gym work it's a lot of core work that you need to do as well because you can't be soft in these fending corners as a as a defender especially as my height as well i need to be aggressive that's another thing you've got to be aggressive at corners defending corners the downside of that one is eventually you're going to have to look at the ball so say the corner's coming in the only way i sometimes get done if i'm looking at the ball sometimes i'm going to have to look at the ball so say if, just as just as i'm looking at the ball and the person makes that run makes that run there and the balls i can't follow him there and i'm and i'm struggling that way going back that way but if you can get touch tight to them i know for a fact the way he is so i can always get there but like i said it's hard to it's hard to get back there see so i'm i'm, I'm I'm out of I'm out of range. You always want to feel them. You always want to feel where they are. Do you know what I mean? As a defender, where, wherever wherever you are, in the, as a defender, especially in the box, I always like to feel my. You know, just just touch them, just touch them. Do you know what I mean? Just touch them. So I always know where they are. And then eventually, this is what this is a little tip, but you shouldn't really do this. As soon as the ball comes, grab the shirt. <laughs> You're not you're not gonna get done for that as long as you as long as if he, if you see if he's there there's no way the referee's gonna see that one there but it, it depends if you, if you start going but see because I'm gonna go with you there but if you go back and then I'm like that that's when you're gonna get done that's when you'll give away a penalty so if he's going forward you can grab your shirt there but if he's going back you've got to let go you've got to let go of the shirt because otherwise he's going to fall down the striker the defender's going to fall down and you're going to give away a penalty because obviously the shirt's coming away from his coming away from his body <laughs> so that's it yeah right we're going to talk about one-on-one -on -one defending for a fullback this is really really tough because obviously as a fullback you're a bit on an island again you've got to assess your wingers a lot of people nowadays a lot of wingers play in to out so which i mean is the predominant the strongest foot is coming back inside where obviously a few years ago wingers would be strongest foot on the left foot of the left foot going especially here so i'm a right back the strongest foot would be left but because people play a lot of four three three the strikers and the sorry the inside forwards wingers most of them are right footed on the on the left hand side coming in on the right foot so how i would do that if i was a fullback start of the match you need to assess how they're what is their strongest foot and you'll be able to gauge that straight away um just keep an eye on it obviously maybe see what he, you know see what he does a lot of wingers that would like to come inside like to play inside inside the fullback so you so you kind of get a grip kind of get a grip on like i said what footed they are so if Knox is a winger and he is right footed i don't want him to knock it inside me so i don't want him to i don't want him to, i don't want to mark him here because if he goes inside he's probably quicker than me so he can, he's got that burst of speed and i'm always chasing him this way and like i said he's opened on his right foot so he can bend it into the far stick he can reverse he can run it and reverse he's got all the advantage then because like he's on his stronger foot he can do whatever um so if i'm if i'm marking knox i'm standing this side a little bit um i'm not standing i'm not standing here i'm standing here so I want him to go on the outside, so I want him there, so I'm going there, so I want him to go that way. But this is the problem, this is catch-22, because if he bursts past me, say I want him to go line, and he bursts past me, and he takes it there, then I risk giving away a penalty. You've got to be sharp the first five yards. The first five yards of critical go, you've got to work at that all the time. You've got to work at your speed, power to speed ratio to get off the markers, just so you can be just as quick as a winger. So if he goes down the line again, and I'm there, see, so... The worst he can do is cross on his wrong, on his weaker foot. So that's how I defend it. But like I said before, the, f the first five yards are critical because wingers are so quick these days and it's imperative that you've got to work at your first five yards. The, the explosive speed is, is massive. You've got to be able to read them, read them, get your arm up. Another thing as well, I like to, again, I like to feel, I like to feel the wingers so I know that I've got him in my sights and I know that, so say, like I said, a lot of wingers aren't, aren't the biggest. Um, and I feel that I could outmuscle them physically, so that's why I always put my arm up. And then, if he goes down the line, even if he beats me, I can strengthen him off, and I can get my body across like that. And I'm, and I'm not giving away a foul, and I'm and it's probably going to go out for a goal kick. So, like I said, get get as low, get as low as you can, get your arm up, and if he goes down the line, I've strengthened him out, I've strengthened him off the ball, arm up and i've got across his body so he can't make the run and it's i'm going to give away a corner maybe but i've defended it really well and you will get a pat on your back off your 
off your teammates because you've stopped a cross going in. You've stopped him coming inside if he's right footed. If he's left footed, say he's left footed, I want to get him back on his right foot. So, so yeah, so I'm gonna, so because again, it's his weaker foot. Predominantly, you want to show him on your weaker foot. A lot of people might not like that. A lot of people just like to show him the line so he can cross it uh, with, because they feel comfortable showing him the line and they know that they can strengthen them. They might be quicker than them, which is fine. You know, you, you've got, like I said, you've got to assess who you're playing up against. So if Knox is quicker than me, but if I feel that I might be quicker than the player I'm up against, I might just go, go on and knock it because I still find to, because I fancy myself to get my body across. It's his strong foot. As a right back, I know that that's the way I love to go because I'm showing him away from goal. So I might just say, you know what, you go down the line and I'm going to match you. I'm going to match you pace for pace, and we'll see what happens. So it all depends on who you're playing against, and hopefully them little tips might help you. Arms up as low as you can, and then, like I said, that first five yards to get off as low as you can, get off, push off, push him away there. Right, we're going to talk about in possession we're going to talk about different parts of the pitch where you might feel comfortable with we're going to talk about where it's if you're at the side and obviously over the halfway line you can drive in like a fullback um as a center half but as a defender my first thought is safety first you, you don't want to you don't want to give say i'm in my, say i'm near my 18 yard box and i'm looking up and i give a pass to my midfielder i don't want to give a pass to my midfielder and he gets intercepted because I'm out the game, he's out the game, and maybe a midfielder's running through, and it's 3v1 on my my other centre half. So if I if this is the 18 yard, if that's the 18 yard box and I'm stepping up, I'm looking towards my second set towards my striker to make a run down there, maybe. Maybe if my midfield, if it's a hundred percent ball and my midfielder can turn and look up, then I'm playing him. If he hasn't got anything at all, or I'm finding my fullback with it, all depends on where your players are. Obviously, if I'm, I'm wrapping it into my fullback who's on the line, or the striker might be coming towards me, I'm stepping up, but I'm taking a big touch and I'm and I'm sprinting off after that. Like I said, again, first five yards is critical. First two yards, three yards. If you if you're in this situation and you see him coming, you might be able to step up. Then first three yards have got to be gone because. You're away from him and then you'll be able to go over there. But if you amble out, say I am I'm ambling out, then he can just close me down and I'm and I'm losing the ball there. So like I said, it all depends on how you feel comfortable with. Sometimes the striker might be coming and I might just reverse it like that, but that could go wrong because if he if he ends up reading that I'm gonna do that, then he's he's away and he's away at goal. So it's all about what you feel comfortable with. Me personally, I, I don't like doing that. That's not me. Like I said, I was I was raised on for safety first. I ain't going to turn back onto my goal and the striker might read me and he's through on goal next thing i'm bringing him down and i'm giving away i'm i'm having a red card because i'm the last man so me personally if the striker's coming i'm either stepping up three yards or i'm playing the balls to my fullback maybe to my midfielder maybe to my striker making a run down the channel maybe to my striker's feet defending's all about safety first there's nothing better than a clean sheet strikers love goals Defender, defenders love defending defenders love clean sheets keepers love clean sheets and your teammates your manager will love clean sheets so like i said do your job defend first it's up to you but i don't like it but you might be you might want to you might try it there's obviously players better technically than me so they might feel comfortable with it so like i said defending first Safety first and play forward. <laughs> Yes, boys, hope you liked today's video. If you did, be sure to comment down below. Smash that like button. Follow our Instagram. Subscribe with notifications on. Oh, and if you like the music that you hear in the background, be sure to check out more from yours truly. It's Knox Hill with Team Gola Ramey. And I'm out. Kick it, flick it in with the greatest. Y'all with your dream. Now go make it. Don't get anxious. Put it in that work, then go get famous.